You are listening to episode 306, a Bolo interview of a real-life Wonder Woman. And on stage with us now is that real-life Wonder Woman. Welcome to the episode. Hello, 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 Alex. How are you? <laughs> I am doing good, fantastic, phenomenal. And this is an anticipated, long-anticipated interview. Thank you. So we're looking forward to it. There's a lot of struggles to get this going. Just for the past two days, that's all. <laughs> Only we know what that means. Only we know what that means. But I want to start off with a lot of good things that have been happening with you. And one of them is recently you a- achieved a long-lasting degree at Barry yes, University. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, I have been trying to attain... Um, a degree. I had gone to college for four years. I um, completed my degree with a university in New Jersey. And, you know, due to just um, issues, uh, family related issues and just setbacks, um, I did not go to my graduation. Uh, Me thinking obviously that everything was fine and done, that um, all I needed to do was just get my diploma because I had completed my four years. Um, Ten years later, I applied uh, to the department that I currently work for. They requested my transcripts, and I told them that I had graduated from that university. So they were like, okay, fine, we'll submit your diploma. So when I called the university to get me my diploma, um, they were like, oh, you didn't come to your graduation. I was like, okay, I wasn't able to for whatever reason. Oh, yeah, but you had to do an exit interview that you never completed. So the four years that you just did expired as of three months ago. This was 10 years later. And I just happened to call within like three months of it expiring. They were like, had you called within those 10 years, you could have done your exit interview and we could have given you your diploma, but you didn't. So you don't get a degree after uh, a lot of spent money. (laughs) Um hard effort and I mean, you name it. So I started going to school again. Um, I started back in 2016. So uh, it took me a few years to finish it. I just accomplished my second degree um, because I'm always gonna look at it that way. I don't care what setbacks I had. I know that I did what I did back in the day. Um, I probably, I didn't have a paper uh, trail to show for it, but I know what I learned and I know what I did. Um, this time around, I went with Barry University, and I kind of changed my degree because I wanted to, uh, working now for the department that I'm working for, I wanted to uh, go into public administration. I wanted to go into business management because I'm in law enforcement, um, thinking that I was going to love that uh field. Mind you, originally I had gone to school for psychology and sociology because I love mental health. Um, It was a great course. It was a great degree. It was an educational degree, so I can actually teach public administration and business management, but it wasn't my passion. Um, I graduated May 11th of this year. It was an all-time very tearful, very exciting, exhilarating experience. Um, and I think as I was marching down, you know, the aisle to go to, to the stage and sit down, I was just crying. It, it was a very humbling experience. And I know that God had a lot to do with that. That being said, I know that everything happens for a reason. Um, and I think that had I not been able to obtain my degree the first time around, I probably wouldn't have taken this degree. If you had told me uh, a few years back, hey, go into public administration and business management, I would have told you no. I, I, I would have told you no. Right. Um, but after taking, taking the course, the things that God has done via that degree have been mind-blowing. It, 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 it's been mind-blowing. So I knew that God works in mysterious ways, and I was meant to go through that degree to get the experience that I got from it because of everything else that God was going to open up after that and all the other doors that God was going to open up after that. So, you know, it's, it's, I'm just so thankful that, you know, God had everything under control because like I said, I would have never taken public administration, business management. Um, and I would have never thought of going into uh, education and teaching. So I got me my uh, teaching degree. 
Um, and mm -hmm. now I plan to go and take my master's in what I love doing, my passion, which is mental health, psychology, um, in the next few months. So now I can use both degrees to my advantage. So there, there you, you go. go. Now, another good thing we're going to talk about without mentioning your agency, so we don't upset three people. <laughs> uh, you have a new CIT, which is crisis intervention team yes. position. Talk about it's that. It's actually, yes, I am crisis intervention certified uh, within the department because obviously that, you know, that's internal. Um, but the department is going into what many departments are not looking into. Uh, it's the crisis response team, which is more of an in-depth unit. It's actually a separate unit from CIT because CIT is your certification, but crisis response is the actual team that's going to be handling um, the crisis intervention calls with a more in-depth uh, knowledge on the topic. Um, they're actually gonna send us out to training again more in-depth training. Um, we're gonna have clinicians working with us and the officers that are chosen, which have already been chosen um, for the unit that is you know, uh, to start in the near future, they will be riding with clinical um, personnel, with clinicians in their vehicles, and they're going to be dealing with crisis intervention calls. So if they're on shift with the clinician, that's basically what the officer is going to be doing all day long. Um, obviously keeping in mind the safety of that clinician, because that takes a uh, president that's paramount and, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a pilot program and it's something that I think other departments are already doing and it's excelling. And I think it's going to excel in the department that I work for. So I'm very happy. Um, I will be uh, supervising that program, that unit with the help of another sergeant, which I love dearly. Um, and just observing him go through the programs and go through CIT and doing everything that he does for mental health and the CIT program has just motivated me to, to kind of be like him and, and, and learn what he has learned and follow into his footsteps and, you know, shadow him. And hopefully when he retires, just continue what he started and what he's done. Um, we also have a great Lieutenant that's passionate about the program. And I think that it's going to go far. It's, it's, it really is. And ultimately that is my passion. And, you know, by furthering my education with CIT mental health and, and just, you know, uh, just psychology overall, I, I think this is something that probably even after I retire, I'm going to uh, go into because that's just been my all time passion. It's an exciting time for law enforcement. See, the original CIT program created in Memphis, Tennessee, was done in 1989, if I remember correctly. And so it's exciting. It's going to another level now, long overdue, if you ask mm -hmm. me. So being a part of that is a great accomplishment. I, 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 go, now, ahead, go ahead. You, you talked about the mental illness aspect of it. And that's phenomenal. Tell us a little bit about the spiritual wellness journey you're also doing. I think um, if you look at it, you can't have one without the other, right? And um, we can talk about mental health, wellness. We can talk about um, spiritual wellness. And we also need to talk about the physical aspect of it all. I think that you can't have one without the other. Right. I know that there's a lot of people um, when it comes to the scientific part of it, you know, the clinical part of it, the psychological, psychiatric part of it that have their opinions on, you know, the 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 reason why things happen. Right. But we see that the system have looked for so many solutions to resolve a problem that's just getting worse and worse and worse. And I think the clinical part of it has not found that, you know, a uh, 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 spark or hasn't found that secret behind everything that's going on with mental health, right? So when you look at the spiritual aspect of it, um, I think that the clinical part of it all 
the logical side of it, the mental side of it, right? The things that, that the, the scientific side of it, when we look at the spiritual side of it, um, there's a different take on mental health, right? And it affects the spiritual part, the, the scientific part. We don't realize that they go hand in hand. You can't, one cannot exist without the other. And I think that the reason that we're not having the results that we want in mental health is because we continue to separate the two. And you have, it's like one country fighting two wars at the same time and not coming together to fight, you know, that one war. So it's like you're fighting a mental health war. Mental health is deteriorating, our children are deteriorating, our youth is deteriorating, adults are deteriorating, and we're fighting the same war in just different forms. If we could just unite and fight that war together, I think we would have a lot more results and positive results. So when it comes to my spiritual wellness, it's something that I think it's very important. One, to be able to help people, right? Because when you right. enter into the mental health aspect of everything, you need to be careful because you get to experience and see so many things and so many people hurting and so many people, you know, dealing with trauma and you get to see suicide and experience the hurt and the pain that mental health causes in every member of your family. When you get so involved in that, you yourself experience trauma. Right. So how can you guard yourself? How can you guard your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit from being affected by that? And it is by spiritually making sure that you are well, you need that spiritual wellness, you know, and a lot of people say, oh, it doesn't matter how you find that you can find spirituality in this and that all roads lead to Rome. And that is not so, you know, right. we have our different uh, opinions about spirituality and i respect it i respect everyone's opinion on spirituality however the only one that created our minds our body our souls that understands us a hundred percent is not the different religions and the different spiritual roads that we choose to take the only person the only one being that can understand us from within is god and that is what I base my spirituality on. You know, you have people that don't want to believe in God. You have people that are atheists. I totally get it, you know, um, and I respect the path that they've chosen to take, but I do urge people, right, to try to give this avenue a try. If you give it a try and it doesn't work for you, which I'm sure it will, and it doesn't work for you, then by all means, you can turn back around. You didn't lose anything. You can continue doing whatever it is that you're doing. But if you find the resolution to a lot of the questions that you have in life about spirituality and spiritual wellness, you know, then you've gained the world. I remember one of the classes that I took, I took a religion class in, uh, at Barry, and my professor was atheist. And he had us, it was world religions. So we had to write our final paper on world religions, different kinds of religions. And the question was, do you believe or do you not believe? So I didn't go too much deep into what I believe. This was my answer and this was what my paper was about. And I heard this somewhere and I can't remember where I heard it. I said, if you live your life following God and doing everything that God has asked you to do according to his word, be a good person, do good, uh, forgive, forget, uh, renew, uh, renew your mind, your soul, your spirit, you know, walk in his word. If you do all of the commandments and everything that God tells you to do, right? You're going to develop better relationships. You're going to be happier. You're going, so many positive things are going to happen to you, right? At the end of your days, if you die, and actually the question was about the afterlife, did I believe or did I not believe? If you die and there is no afterlife, did you really lose something? No, you gained family, you gained love, you gained so much and you died. Afterlife didn't exist. It is what it is. You've lived a good life. However, 
if you choose not to follow God, if you choose not to do and follow his commandments and live by his word and do what he asks of you so that you can have a better life, if you choose not to do that and you do it your way, hey, listen, not a problem. Nobody's going to blame you or judge you for that. However, when you get to the end of your days, if you die without salvation, if you die following the God that tells you, I died for you, I shed my blood for you, I'm your salvation, I am what you need, and you die, and there is an afterlife, guess what? You just lost everything. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to play with that, whether there is or there isn't. I'm not going to play with that. Guess what? I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to do what God asks me to do. And I'm going to make sure that the spiritual life that I live and my spiritual wellness is something that I could be proud of so that at the end of my days, I can die happily and say, you know what? I experienced all the goodness that I could have experienced in my life. And if there isn't an afterlife, I didn't lose anything. But if there is an afterlife, then I gained everything. And, and, and that is what my paper was about. And what I've taken from that is that in order for me to be okay in every other aspect of my life, I need to have God in my life. You know, I need to be spiritually well. And I'm not saying that it's easy, but it's not impossible, impossible either, you know? Um, and, and, and that's where I base everything that I do. I base it around God's word because his word is my fortress. It's my strength. You know, that's where I draw strength from because as human beings, it doesn't matter if we're professionals, um, you know, we're in law enforcement, medical field, firefighter, nurses, practitioners, clinicians, it doesn't matter what you do in life. There's only so much that you can give. Okay, mm -hmm. there's only so much that you can drain from or, 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 or pull from to give to other people. And if you don't fill that void that you're left with, where are you going to end up? And people are still unhappy because they continue to fill their lives with other things, hence feeling the void right after that. You know, people fill their lives with going to the gym and, and, and doing this and doing that. And none of that is wrong. Please do so because you also need to be physically fit and physically well. But that is not where you draw your strength from. When you go home and you lock yourself in your room and you close that door and you still feel that void, feel that void, you have to ask yourself, what am I filling my life with that's not filling that void? Why do I still feel it? You're missing God is what you're missing from that. So that is my belief. Again, I'll respect anybody's views and anybody's beliefs, but I can honestly say that everything that I've gone through in my life from beginning to end I've tried so many different things, and this is the only one thing that has made me feel different and that has allowed me to look at life in a different perspective. And, and, and I've seen, you know, God's glory and everything that I've been able to experience. You know, when I've been down, he's lifted me up. Like, he's the one, he's the source that I've drawn my strength from. So I can't do one thing without the other. And on top of that, you know, I also try to stay physically fit, go to the gym, you know, eat healthy because everything uh, uh, connects to everything. And you need to be able to be 100 percent if you want to deal with this issue of mental health. Now, to make a distinction, because we have to in today's society, CIT is a mental illness uh, approach. And we are talking about a personal wellness journey that you strongly believe in and what you're creating. Mm -hmm. What is your target group in that spiritual wellness journey? Uh, mental health is affecting so many people. And when we say mental health, we only think of the schizophrenic we think of the bipolar, mm. we think of the suicidal, we think of these major, the big elephants in the room, right? Did you know that there are men that because they're not able to provide for their families the way that they would want to or protect their family or do whatever it is that they need to do for their families, did you know that they psychologically are disrupted 
in their minds and they might just be sad and depressed, that's mental health. A woman mm -hmm. that just came out of postpartum and she's going through what we call postpartum depression, that's mental health. You have so many aspects of mental health that it's not just the clinical bipolar, schizophrenic, you know, mental health encompasses everything. It's about getting up in the morning and seeing your life in a different light, right? Um, you know what, can I attain that goal? Can I do that? Am I capable? Am I enough? Um, can I survive this? Can I survive that? Every war and every battle starts in our minds. And then once you think it, you absorb it, it seeps down to your heart. And what we speak and comes out of our mouth is because we thought about it, it went down to our heart, we absorbed it, we analyzed it, we processed it, and then it comes out of our mouth. And then it affects mm -hmm. your physical wellness, it affects your mental wellness, it affects you in every kind of way. So when you talk about CIT and crisis intervention, it's not just an intervention for someone that's experiencing a visual crisis. How many people commit suicide that are like the happiest people in the world? And then they commit suicide and you go, what just happened? Because you didn't expect it. So for me, I have to attack the way that I deal with mental health in so many different aspects, because remember, I'm in law enforcement, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm also a person, I'm also a Christian. And for me to say that I'm going to deal with mental health the same way in both realms, you know, that's not so. It's, it's not something that I can say, you know, that, it, that is going to happen. But I think after I retire from law enforcement, and I think with the experience that I've gotten in that with all of the crisis intervention experience that I've gotten from law enforcement, plus all of the things that I've experienced in mental health as a Christian in my spiritual journey, I think for me, after retirement, that's where I'm going to take that experience and combine the two, because I mm. think that the two cannot work outside of each other. And I think you can address problems with medication if people need it, right? But if you start attacking the spiritual need that they have at some point, right, it's going to start leveling out where one is going to get rid of the other. And you just have to trust that God is able to bring a person up to par to where they need to be and deliver them from a lot of the things that they're going through because mental health could be physical, but I'm sorry, mental health can also be spiritual. You don't know the demons that people are battling with. And we don't mm. want to hear that word. We don't want to hear that word. People, people are battling with their own demons. And you cannot treat the spiritual aspect of something with medication. You, you just, you, you can't, right? So I think we're at, you know, a level where we're just, we're, we're just not up to par with what mental health is really about. And at some point in our lives, then we got to come to, you know, a balance and learn to adapt both methods in order to be able to cure mental health. That's why I'm telling you that, you know, we have so many good things on both ends, but we're just not combining forces to be able to deal with the problem that we had have, have at hand. So to answer your question, that's where I'm headed with mental health. That's where my vision is and my passion is with mental health has nothing to do with law enforcement has nothing to do with you know uh churches and spirituality and this and that it has a lot to do with recognizing what the problem is and finding the better solution for the problem and it is a combination of both science psychology psychiatry and you know redemption and 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 that is my opinion and like i said you don't have to agree with me but that is the vision that I have. And, you know, I've experienced it through the years and I've seen positive results. Now let's talk about something which is enjoyable, especially to you. And that's photography. I love it. Photography. Um, photography for me is not just picking up a camera. Photography for me is seeing 
God's wonders through my lens. When I pick up photography and I look at just everything that God has created, you know, it just, it, 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 it hits close to home and it's very spiritual and it's something that it's just, you know, um, jaw dropping. I can't really explain um, the greatness of God for me if it's not through a picture. A picture uh, says a thousand words. And sometimes when you just can't recognize, you know, the beauty that there is in, in God and just everything that he has created, you know, you, you, you don't learn to appreciate. So photography for me is just something more than just, ah, you know, clicking a picture. Um, it's about, and, and that's why I love landscape photography. And that's just my passion. And that's what I want to go into. I'm still practicing, um, taking a few courses. Again, photography is just something that you really need to dedicate a lot of time to with my job, school, I have a family, my career. I mean, just everything that I do, it's not that it's taken a backseat for me. You know, it's always present in my life because ultimately that is what I want to do. Now, uh, learning photography also helps me because like we said before, I've gone into business management, public administration, and I've recently opened up a business. So as crazy as I am and as crazy as God knows that I am and as, as crazy as he is, he knows that if anybody can accomplish the craziness that you know he's put in my mind, it really would be me. A lot of people go, oh my God, you're doing too many things at one time. I go, hold up, mm -hmm. hold on a second. It's all gonna fall into place at some point. Just trust the process, trust me, it'll get there. So uh, photography is going to help me not only in you know staying closer to God, but also in, in future business endeavors. So everything that I'm learning, I'm learning for a purpose, a plan, a reason. And I think that God has really orchestrated this whole thing because <laughs> it just seems crazy. But anyways. Well, photography to me, especially landscape photography, allows you to focus on what you're looking at yeah. and gives you a deeper meaning. And so it's a it's a great hobby to have. I love and, it. You know, skill set. There's not everybody can take pictures. I'm one of them. <laughs> I, I I'm think... one of them. <laughs> um, I can teach you. But I one of the things that I do enjoy about photography and this is like way before I even started learning about it. Like I've realized that I have an eye for things. I can pick up things and I can just, I see it, you know, I visualize it. Um, I can't put it into paper and in a picture yet, because again, I don't know like how to maneuver the camera and like all, all of the things that, you know, uh, fall into photography, like the, the, the theory of it all. Um, I'm getting there, but I think I just have an eye for, and, and it's like I say, it's just an eye for God's beauty. And, you know, sometimes I put myself and I go, God, you know, let me see through the lens what you see. And, and that's always been my prayer and that's always been my passion. And I don't know, I just, I'm able to see something and go, oh my God, you know, mm -hmm. and I've had people go, I don't see it. I don't see it. And I'm like, what do you mean? So it, it is a passion, you know, um, and a hobby that I've loved since, oh my God, I think like 15, 16, 17 years old. Um, I'm not going to tell you how old I'm going to be, so I'm just figuring well, it out. I, we'll keep that a real secret. We'll keep that a secret. Yeah, superheroes don't have age, by the way. No, we don't. No, we don't. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Um, you've never seen Wonder Woman and me in the same room at the same no, time. So just figure no, it out. <laughs> that is true. That's a hundred percent correct. That's a hundred percent correct. Figure it out. Now, in order to move a lot of these projects that you have that are really inspiring, you sell merchandise, shirts and all kinds of other little goodies. Tell us about that. So that's where all of the craziness starts happening, right? So because of my passion for mental health, um, I had an idea to 
some way, somehow be able to, you know, put a message out there about the, you know, about the importance of combining God and mental health. I think in the Christian community, mental health is a taboo and people just don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. So I wanted to put that out there to, you know, um, what do they call it? Um, you know, to say, to say positive things about mental health, to, you know, to recognize that mental health exists and that, you know, Jesus and therapy come hand in hand. Um, I've been to therapy, you know, in my life and, you know, you have to normalize therapy. You have to normalize mental health and you have to, uh, understand that the two go hand in hand. So in order to do that, you know, I wanted to like put messages out there. So I started going on like different artistic programs, you know, online and creating like designs and things like that. And I said, oh, I can make this into uh, something that, you know, people wear or something that people, you know, uh, uh, are able to, to just have and celebrate, you know, their wellness or whatnot. So I started making t-shirts. Um, I started designing them. I opened up social media pages. I opened up, uh, which took me like two years, by the way. I mean, just creating, I am not Mm. technologically savvy. And it took me like two years just to be able to create an Etsy account and then uh, create my own uh, website, social media, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. I did it all. Um, I opened up a company and I said, you know what? Let me open up this company. Um, So I have that. And when it comes to choosing the name of the company, I didn't realize that through the years, because of experiences in my life, God had already given me the name of the company. And I just had it in the back of my head. So when the opportunity came about, God made me remember, um, you know, to, and excuse me, I'm going to charge my phone a little bit because it's saying that it is running out of battery. If you just give me one second. So give me one second. It's going to move here a little bit, but it's fine. we'll get, give me a second. Can you see me? Okay. So I went ahead you took yourself and, out. um, you know, God brought to mind, you know, the name of the company and whatnot. And if you want, that is going to be like a completely separate interview because it's there super you go. long. We'll talk about that later, but I opened up the yep. company and everything just started falling into place. So then, you know, that's why I tell you that although I didn't want to take this public administration and business management course because it wasn't my passion, God was like, you don't realize that I was the one that allowed that to happen because of the company that you were going to start. You needed that business management. You needed this. You needed that, you know. And in that class, you know, in that degree, I took about five to seven business management courses that I learned so much from. And I said, oh my God, these things are going to be a part of, you know, the business that I just opened. So the company is about mental health. It's about finding your identity in Christ post trauma, right? So if you look into that, I said, if I can help people find their identity in Christ post trauma and tell them that they do have a plan, they do have a purpose, right? And it doesn't matter what they've gone through in life. They can move past the hurt. They can move past the suffering, right? And if they've encountered situations in their lives, like I have, that they've had to start from zero many times, and especially as a woman, right? not having the uh, uh, monetary funds, not having a car, not having the home, not having a career, being a stay-at-home mom and going through divorce and going through so many things that have happened to me in my life. I said, if I can hold on to God's promises, if I can, you know, overcome my struggles, my suicidal thoughts, if I can overcome all of this, then why not teach women, right? And men, that this is attainable. So that's where I mixed in the whole company with mental health. So 
I hope to in the company that I've created, which is fairly new. I'm just starting. I'm learning all of this, you know, Instagram reels and all of the stuff that people do nowadays to be able to, which at my age, it's been very difficult learning, but I'm sure that I'll be able to do so. Um, it's my hope to celebrate, you know, people to celebrate their struggles right. and to let them know <laughs> that there is hope after trauma and that you don't have to commit suicide, that if you just give life a chance, if you just give God a chance and you're able to hold on for just a little bit longer. And I get very emotional when I talk about that because it's been my own experience, right? If you're just able to hold on just a little bit longer, you'll be able to see the beauty that, you know, can come into your life later. Right. And, you know, I chose to hold on just a little bit longer after so many years of depression, after so many years, years going through, you know, uh, suicidal tendencies and just all of the things that I was going through that nobody knew that I was going through. Um, times where I almost did it and God entered the room, right? Uh, and sat there with me and was able to speak to me directly and just bring me out of a situation that I was not, you know, uh, uh, going to be able to survive. So that's been my experience. And I've just held on and I've always felt God's voice in my heart telling me, just hold on just a little bit longer, just hold on just a little bit longer. And I am living that right now. This is like a lot of answered prayers. So I hope that the same way that, you know, I've been able to receive that help, um, because I opened my heart, you know, to the Lord to just be able to help other people and guide them in that path that there is hope after trauma, after fatherlessness, after sexual abuse, and after all of the things that people have gone through and that I myself have also gone through. There is hope at the end of the tunnel. And I hope that, you know, with the company, with the positive messages, with the t-shirts and like all of these little things that I'm still coming up with, um, you know, because I'm still experiencing, this is a fairly new project for me. I hope to just reach people and let them know that, you know, there is a plan and a purpose for your life post trauma and that you need to forget the past, get rid of the old, leave space for the new and open your hands so that God can give you the things that, you know, have been in store for you all along that the enemy doesn't want you to achieve that the enemy doesn't want you to have, because if he can, take you out right of this world then you will never receive the good things that god has for you and he wants to make you believe that there is nothing better that there is nothing out there that there's no light at the end of the tunnel your life is over just take your life and there's mm. nothing better for you he's lying he's lying to you that is not true and um you know as a minority hispanic woman i can tell you today I've accomplished so much in my life that I didn't expect that I would accomplish, you know, a degree, uh, a satisfying career, um, a sergeant, you know, with the department that I work for, crisis intervention, certified officer, just being able to help people, building a business and so many other things that, you know, are in store that I'm doing right now. So um, that's where that is. That's where my business is, is about. Hold on. Another branch uh, from my craziness. Well, let's talk about okay, so the, the new podcast, thing coming right? up, and this is last on this our agenda. Thing. It is because people have these your podcast coming up and soon just, enough. Their lives are very busy, right? They don't have time to sit in front of a TV anymore. They don't have time to, you know, visual visually um see things they don't read books i mean there's so many things that people visually don't do anymore um so they sit in their cars and they listen to podcasts so check this out so if i'm able to reach people audibly via a podcast right and they're able to learn about mental health and learn about all of the things that you know i think are in store for this podcast and then through there you know, get motivated to do 
you know, to, to promote mental health, whether it be through a t-shirt, whether, whatever it is or whatever um, article or item, you know, I'm able to, to uh, upload to the website, then they will eventually go to the webpage, you know, purchase that item and then, you know, just promote it out there and just promote mental health and uh, uh, normalize Jesus and therapy. You know, so I think the podcast is my primary goal and then the store, the business and all of that other stuff is, uh, is, is, is just secondary. But I think everything is going to start through the podcast was that I'm still trying to set up. I've been trying to go live for like a month now. My equipment has taken dumps left and right. And I think as of yesterday, um, my laptop just uh, 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 completely crashed. It got full of water. Um, a whole bunch of water fell on it. I mean, I'm talking about like it just took a dump. <laughs> um, I went to Apple yesterday to get it fixed. They were like, did you know that your Apple Care expired? I said, I have it on a renewal every single uh, year. So I don't know what happened. So I'm still trying to figure that out. But apparently they said that my Apple Care expired. So my laptop just took a dump. And I'm telling you, I've been having all kinds of issues. I have my podcast equipment set up. My microphone's not working. I don't know how to work GarageBand. And man, it's just, it, I've been doing this. <laughs> um, Ouch. It, it, it's been difficult. But I think that before anything good happens, I think um, all this other stuff needs to happen because it's going to be a blessing. Welcome to my it's world. it's going to be something that's going to help a lot of people so i the enemy just doesn't want this to you know be pushed forward but i'm not a quitter um i've been through worse i've gotten up a hundred a hundred times you know fallen a hundred times gotten up 101 yes. times i'm not a quitter um you know just bring it on i'm going to continue doing this because this is going to get out there and i know that it's going to help a lot of people and i know there's a plan nope. and a perfect i know there's a plan and a purpose for my life post-trauma. You know, I did not go through everything that I went through in life. And like I said, this is gonna be a totally different podcast. Um, just to sit around and do nothing. I know that God has a plan and a purpose. Um, and, and, and that's what my goal is, that's what my vision. Um, one of the verses that I guide myself by is Habakkuk 2.2 uh, from two to three. And this is one of the verses that, you know, God ministered to me before I started all of this, and I didn't even know what the verse meant. It says, write the vision down and make it plain on tablets so that anyone that reads it can run with it. So at that point, I started writing everything down on paper, the way that I wanted to see it, how I wanted it to happen. I mean, I just wrote everything down. And I can honestly tell you that that verse has come to life. Because the way that I wrote it down, the way that everything was drafted on paper, is the way that it's happening. And verse three says, although it tarry, wait for it yes. because it will surely come. So I know it's taken me a little bit of time, but I'm trusting God's timing and I'm trusting his process. And I know that eventually it will come to pass. It's just, I have no control of when, but God has control of like the perfect timing for all of this. So I'm just waiting. Yeah. I'm being obedient and I am executing what I need to execute. You know, the result is in God's hands. I can't really. That's right. And God know, is no using you that, so. as that vessel. Cool. All righty. So. I yeah, opened up a YouTube us Give us uh, um, some uh, it's called insight on where Design. I can get merchandise, so, uh, that's where the I can YouTube look up channel. social so media. You just find uh, her Divine Design. Um, when it comes to social media, is Oasis Creations LV, meaning Lisa Victoria. So Oasis Creations LV. And when it comes to the website, it is oasiscreationslv.net. Oasiscreationslv.net for the website. Um, but if you just look up, look up in social media, Facebook, 
um, Twitter, Instagram is going to be Oasis Creations LV. Um, and you will see Gosh. everything there. Uh, her divine design is the YouTube channel. Oh, and the Instagram page for the mental health uh, aspect of it all is called Empowered by Divine Design. Empowered by Divine Design. And that's going to be on Instagram. Um, so, you know, if you want to go looking for it. So those that are listening and, and couldn't get a pencil fast enough, I'll have everything down in the show notes. You can click and follow, and we encourage you to do that. You know, this isn't going to be the last show for Wonder Woman. Amen. There's Amen. a lot of people Amen. interesting in what Wonder Woman is doing. There she is. And Wonder Woman. Thank you, Alex, for inviting me. Has a superhero. Um, and that superhero that reflects Wonder Woman that doing, and I is hope God. That uh, you succeed in everything that you're doing. Thank We're you for the very, invite. Thank you for very happy that you and, came on the show um, today. Thank you for what you're doing to bring, you know, bringing people onto the show just to inform others of. I think what you're doing is just bringing different people from different aspects of life, from different, you know, corners of the world, and then just introducing them to the world. I think that sometimes we stick to just one a norm. You know, this is what everybody's doing. This is this, this is that. But you're bringing so much uh, uh, information to the program in a different form, in a different way. And we have to realize that there's so many different people out there listening to this. You know, you're reaching different groups of people by bringing different groups of people into your program. So I want to thank you for that. Um, you know, because we can't just adjust our mindset just to one thing. You know, there's there's a there's a lot of need out there and I, I wanna thank you for yeah. for having that vision as well. So you'll be my first. <laughs> exactly. I, I I promise. Uh, just help me work garage band, please. And it's I am ready to be a guest on your Thank podcast. You. <laughs> so we'll be working on that. Thank you so much. I, I will. I will. Bless well, we you thank you mind. for being with us on episode 306, a Bolo interview of a real life Wonder Woman. Thank you for being with us. Continue blessings. <laughs>